Hi guys, and welcome back to a brand new Reddit Reactions video. Hello everyone, what is the tea? What is the Darjeeling, the Lapsang Sushon, the Scalding Hot Assam? What is the tea? Are you ready for your tea, Sydney? Every month I do a live stream on Twitch where I basically go through the Am I the A-hole Reddit and we read stories and we discuss whether we think these people are a-holes. Why not just do an actual video on Am I the A-hole here? So, before I start, please hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos that are coming up, and make sure that you do leave your own opinions in the comment section on any of the stories that we do talk about today. But let's not beat around the bush and get on with this Reddit <gasps> reactions. Am I the a-hole for getting a matching tattoo to my son? What? I'm not a fan of tattoos. So you got a tattoo. I'm not a fan of tattoos, only because they are so ubiquitous now. What does ubiquitous mean? I don't even know what that word means. What does ubiquitous mean? Pass me the dictionary. It means common found everywhere. Okay, thank you. Only because they're so ubiquitous now. When I was a kid, tattoos were rare and rebellious. Nowadays, they're everywhere and that's fine. People can decorate themselves however they want, but you have a problem with it. But you don't like, okay, sure, right. But for example, my grandfather had tattoos. His were from when he was in the military and they were memorials to his friends. Okay, so because your grandfather had this specific tattoo, doesn't suddenly mean that everyone else's tattoos are meaningless just because your grandfather had one as a memorial. This person has a stick up their ass clearly about tattoos. My son, 19, has wanted a tattoo since he was little. So I told him that it's okay, but to be, re but to really consider whatever he got and it has to at least have a little mean, has to be a little bit. I can't read girls, I'm on the game. You're frightening me. So my son who's 19 has really wanted tattoos since he was little. So I told him it was okay, but to really consider whatever he got, and it has to at least be a little bit meaningful and not just do it to be cool. I told him if he got something and it had no special meaning, I would get the exact same one. Why? That makes absolutely no sense. I guess he thought it was an empty threat because he got a tribal armband tattoo. I mean, that is questionable, especially nowadays, but sure. I asked him about it and he said it just looked cool. Okay, well, I have disposable income and a high pain tolerance. Now we have matching tattoos and he no longer wants to show his off. He says, I'm an a-hole for getting a tattoo just to prove a point. I think it's silly to get a meaningless tattoo to look cool. So you got a meaningless tattoo. This is what a weird, I'm sorry. What an utterly weird thing to do. So. You essentially just did everything that you hate to prove a point when in reality, you've now just done exactly what you hate. You like, what? How can you not see that? Like, what? 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 You're crazy. Yes. Tribal tattoos, very 2000s. It's very like outdone, outdated tattoo. I would obviously never get anything like that, but he got it. Sure. If he wants it and it makes him happy, it might be a bit cringe. But sure, this whole idea of like your tattoos should have this really deep meaning to you is what people used to say years ago because they actually didn't want people getting tattoos. But because of that notion, it now means that a lot of people get really stupid tattoos because they're trying to find that there has to be the biggest meaning. So they try to find like a quote of a song and then go, actually, I want this, but it has to be done in like a star formation because the stars are also part of the planets. And my mum loved the planets, but she loved this song. Therefore, my memorial tattoo must be the stars of the planets shaped out like this on my arm and it looks like a mess when in reality if you want a tattoo because you love something get a tattoo because you love something yes i've got cartoons i've got gaming i've got other things that i've loved in my life this doesn't have any more of a meaning to me than like because i just love the simpsons like it doesn't have these deep meanings that these people want you to get tattoos for but like it's still something I really want and I love. And I absolutely adore the work that I've got done. I don't understand why you getting the same tattoo is teaching him a lesson at all. I, I really fail to understand the logic in what you've done because you've just given yourself a shit tattoo that you don't like, which you now have to show people if you're ever in like a tank top or it's in the summer, so you have your arms out. Like, 
I don't understand what you're doing. That is so weird because your child is now not going to want to hang around with you as much or do things with you. Parents in the audience, if you are here and you've read this and you understand more than I have, I, I get the whole thing of like she's trying to make it feel like because she has got it now, her son won't want to show off the same thing she's got. But by saying that, you're saying that you don't think you're cool or that you don't... It's almost like degrading yourself by doing this as well, by saying, well, he'll be embarrassed of me because I'm pathetic. I don't, I don't understand. I don't get it. Sorry, this one's really thrown me through a loop. What the f uh, I really don't understand what the hell this was or what she was trying to prove. I don't even think you're an asshole. I just think you're fucking uh, weird. Oh. So this one is called, Am I the a-hole for telling my daughter she's a disappointment? Oh, God. I have two daughters, 23 and 20. They are both so beautiful and smart and I really love them both. I always wanted them to be strong and independent women who could stand on their own feet and I tried to raise them that way. Wonderful. They were both interested in volleyball. I always supported their interest. My younger is still playing in a team and also studying at a good university. She's really hardworking and even if she does not succeed in playing professional volleyball, she will definitely have a good job. My older daughter quit both sports and schools when she got pregnant at the age of 18. When she first told us that she was pregnant, I was very upset and advised her to have an abortion because of having a child at such a young age would, dis would disrupt her life. That can be true. It can't be true. Like, again, it depends on situations. Like, I understand, uh, like, 18, to have a child at 18 to me seems utterly shocking. It doesn't always work out terribly. I think this is one of those, like, case-by-case -case basis. But personally, 18 does seem very young to be having children. She did not want to have an abortion, and my wife supported her decision. To be honest, I was very insistent on her having an abortion at the time. But when I saw she remained determined, I dropped the issue and supported her fully, even though I didn't want to. I mean, that is, I guess, a good parent. Like, you still supported her. She got married quickly and with the baby's father. She then decided to stay at home and take care of her child and her husband started to work. I never wanted my daughter to be financially dependent on her husband, but I never voiced it either. But of course, my daughter knows that I'm bothered by this. Yesterday, we were having a dinner and with my daughter and my wife. My wife and daughter started talking about being a mother. My wife told her that even though I wanted her to have an abortion, I loved her, my grandson very much. We can stop talking about the abortion now. The baby's here. <laughs> like, we can stop saying it over and over again. <laughs> I, I like it's one of those people go I hate that kind of piercing but I don't mind it on you like if it's happened, you don't need to say that. Like, you don't need to say it. I love my grandson very much now. My daughter asked me if that was so, and I said, of course I love him. I really love my grandson, but my daughter knew I was bothered by her situation, so it didn't sound, so it didn't sound sincere, sincere at all. My daughter said I could give an honest answer. I told her I really love my grandson, but that I was disappointed that she had become a mother at an early age, had left school and her job, and was now dependent on a man. She didn't argue with me, but the rest of the night, felt a bit intense. At the end of the night, she went home and my wife started a fight over what I said. I told her that she was the one who wanted an honest answer, but my wife is sure that I am the a-hole. My youngest one agrees with me, but says I was rude to say it out loud. Yes. So I think in this situation, I understand finding out your daughter might be pregnant at 18 might be a bit shocking. Like, Again, I do feel like 18 is very young to be getting married, to be having children. Like, this feels very much like the 1940s. In today's society, having children carries a lot more kind of like responsibility and weight than it did 30 years ago, 40 years ago, because of how much things cost now. And so, unless you're in like a really good situation to be able to support this child, I do think 18 is very young, especially to get married as well. It's like, you have a, your whole life ahead of you. Like, you can do that later on. And but if you're having a child at 18, it is going to stop you from doing a lot of things. And I know not every single person's life is the same. So not everyone cares about a lot of these things. I come from a position where my mum could not support me. And she had three children. We were foster homes. She was terrible. You know, she was an addict. She drank a lot of alcohol. She was abusive. So, like... This is from a situation my mum had us when she was really young. So obviously I'm coming from a place of someone who has a lot of trauma at my mum not being able to look after us. I'm going to see a lot of things as children that we should never have seen. Although it sounds weird to say this because it means I wouldn't be here. My mum is someone who should never have had children. Then he will die. 
if she's happy and her husband is happy to support her, it's fine. If you're going to be in these slightly more traditional roles where the woman takes care of the baby and you know, lives at home and takes care of the house and the husband goes out, I do think it is, especially nowadays, try to find some way that you have your own income to solely rely on someone else, especially if you are young because you change a lot in those times. Like You are going to be a totally different person from when you're 18 to when you're 25. Trust me. And I'm... I'm a, a shell of a person. Compared to what I used to be, I am nothing like I used to be at all. And if you are young, I do think if you're going to be a stay-at-home mum, please just find some way to make some money yourself so you're not completely relying on your husband. Chances are, because you get together very young, you're probably, like, I hate to say it, but like, I just feel like there could be a chance of you breaking up because of how much you change in those times. Just please find some way to maybe make an income for yourself. If it all does go tits up, you're not completely screwed over. But I do think that the father should have just been like, it's like, just keep talking about this abortion. Like the baby's here, the child is here. Stop talking about it, it's done. Like it's, she's not gonna be like, what Ron DeSantis says and goes, oh, there's post-birth abortions, murder. Don't tell the child this now. Like, you have to get over it. You have to move on because the choice has been made and it's too late. There's no point now being like, I wish you did it differently because the child is here and that's going to affect the child. It doesn't matter now what's going to happen. The child needs to be the number one priority forever now. Now do us all a grace and favor and shut up about it. Until the child is old enough to support itself, it doesn't matter if you didn't like the fact that your kid had a child. The grandchild, your grandchild, the mother's child is here now. It's too late. So get over it because you're just gonna make a rift between your family. And wouldn't you rather have your, your child and your grandchild in your life than not at all? Because if you don't stop this kind of attitude, they're not gonna stop, they're gonna stop, they're gonna cut contact. To tell your child this, I'm really upset that you actually had the child because you should have done so much more, is not gonna do anything but make you look like an arsehole and your child hating you. And it's gonna affect the grandchild. And as someone who is from a situation that was like that, and my mum like, was so terrible at having a parent, like that affected me because of the environment that I was around. That affected me and my brother and my sister like that really affected us because people above us just weren't doing what they should have done am i the a-hole for kicking out my daughter because she got pierced oh my god it happens though it happens unfortunately hi all i'm 46 mother daughter is 18 so she has been making reckless decisions and overall hasn't focused on school and anything important for the past few years. I've lashed out at her a few times, but overall tolerated her behavior because she is my daughter and I love her, but you've kicked her out your house, so you clearly don't love her. However, she just never learns. Apparently she got her nipples pierced on her 18th birthday almost a year ago without asking my wife or me without even mentioning something. She's 18. My wife and I found out this morning when my wife accidentally saw them while our daughter was showering. Why Why? Was, why did you see your daughter showering? Like, why were you in the bath? What? Were you snooping? What? what? I thought that you sound like a snooping family. We confronted her at lunch and told her that it was very, a very stupid thing to do. I told her I can accept piercings on the ears and maybe even on the nose because they're somewhat pretty, but the ones on the nipples are ugly and overall dangerous due to infections. I mean, any piercing can get infections. These people clearly don't know anything about infections. What I will say as well is actually, I'm more surprised that they'd be more shocked about a nipple piercing than like on their face or on their ears because you can't see them. Only a certain person will be able to see these piercings. So like, they're not even gonna be noticeable. For you to have a weird reaction to nipple piercings and not ear piercings or facial piercings, to me, doesn't make any sense. She's been like that for a while and even got tattoos when she was 17. Obviously don't get tattoos when you're 17, I will agree with that. Very small ones without permission, that is bad. Because she told us if we don't let her get them now, she will just get them once she turns 18. I guess that's what, <clears throat> I guess once she turns 18, she's even more determined to mess, mess up and keep rebelling or whatever she She's doing. She didn't say much during the whole argument except tell us that she knows the dangers that come with having these piercings, which I think is BS based on her reaction when I mentioned that. In the end, I told her that since she has no respect for me and my wife, once she graduates, which is this year, she has to leave. My wife agrees with me. However, my 13-year-old son says it's too harsh of a punishment. Am I the a-hole here? 
Absolutely. I'm gonna slap you in a minute. So I do wanna point out, unfortunately, um, there are people out there who will uh, still react very badly to things like this, even though it's just piercings. People always say to me all the time, it's always like, oh, I really want this piercing, my, pa my parents don't let me, what should I do? And I, my, my advice for you is, wait until you move out wait until you're self-supportive because you don't want anything like this to happen to you and i've heard these kind of stories often where people get tattoos or piercings or something in their parents like right out the door because they don't like them if you're living under your parents roof unfortunately what they say goes it's not about what's fair or not you have to do what's right for you and if your parents are the kind of people that would kick you out because you've got some kind of piercings or tattoos like don't get them until you're able to support yourself because a nose piercing is not worth being kicked out on the street you know, that is just reality, unfortunately. It's not fair, but it's reality. So when I see, like, people on TikTok and I get these videos being like, oh, I'm, I'm my parents and I couldn't pierce my nose, so I'm going to do it myself in my bedroom. I'm like, it's not worth it, sis. I think these, these parents being f***ing assholes. Now, there could potentially be another story going on here that we're not being told about. Apparently, she's making reckless decisions and hasn't focused on school or anything important for the past few years. There could actually be a lot of things happening in that. Maybe she's been taking drugs. Maybe she's doing like lots of smoking. Maybe, maybe there are so many things that maybe she's like breaking things in the house. None of this was told every time i read one of these stories i always say that the people telling the stories will always try to make themselves feel like the superhero of the story it's a natural thing we all do whenever we tell a story from our side we always make it out as if like we're the star we are the main character it's a natural thing we do it's very difficult to tell a story without being biased in any way shape or form towards yourself i still think that what we've been told here the fact that they haven't really given any real descriptions of terrible things she's done this is totally unhinged totally unhinged. I find it very strange that you get angry at a piercing that you actually cannot see. And the only reason you saw was because your daughter was showering and you were in, you saw her in the shower. That's weird. I don't know what's going on there. Like maybe you just needed something from the shower and she said, come in. I don't know. That's weird. But you're fine with having nose piercings or ear piercings. That doesn't make sense to me. That doesn't make sense to me. And the fact that you would kick your daughter out because she's done this, unless there's loads more things that has happened and you haven't told us, which again, you've not told us here. So I'm not just gonna assume that all this other stuff's happened because you would have said it. You're an arsehole. What terrible parents. You're always making things difficult. Please, please, please. If you are someone who have parents who hate tattoos, hate piercings, hate all this stuff, just wait until you've moved out before getting things because you don't want to end up like this person. And now having to be kicked out because you've made a decision that isn't drastically important. Like you don't need piercings, you want them. So the want doesn't outweigh the outcome that could possibly happen. So please, if you're in a situation like this, just wait until you're 18, wait until you've moved out, wait until you're self-supporting. It's, it's not worth this. Okay, so this one is entitled, am I the a-hole for calling out someone being gay? Oh dear. It was during a rehearsal for school for a school musical play in my junior year in of high school, 2018. I was part of a cast to be in it, consisting of 9th and 12th graders. Anyways, I and most of us were openly straight, besides for one guy who was bi- I was openly straight. Who says things that we were openly straight? Shut up. Typically, it's not natural for the rest of us to make eye contact when seeing someone take their clothes off wh while just... It makes things look sus. What? I was then proceeding to putting on my outfit and stripped off my pants from, from my costume. I then noticed a little ninth grader glanced at me and the other people amongst us in my direction in silence when we were changing. He then turned away, so as soon as I spotted him, that's weird, right? No. No, that's not weird. Like, if you're just in a change... If there's a whole group of you in a changing room, everyone's not going to literally be like this. I remember what it was like when I was in school, in high school, and, like, all the guys would be talking to each other. Like, no, we didn't all stand there getting dressed in silence, like, looking down, being like, no. So a lot of people got changed and left the room while it was just me and... When it was just me and him in there. I then tried to strike up conversation. I saw you were staring. He pretended that he didn't hear me, but I repeated it. I saw you were staring. You could have just said hello. You've made, now you've made it awkward. He says he doesn't know what I'm talking about. Clearly he thinks I'm stupid to not be incredibly obvious. Are you gay? I asked him. 
he felt offended by this question. Like I was going to bully him. It was just a fair question and then shuts up and talk. What's it got to do with anything though? But that's not it. He goes out of the door and tells the director a bit of an overreaction. Was I in the wrong to question him? It's okay to be gay. It's not like I was being homophobic. What do you think? You bitch. I get that you're young and young people do weird things. I get it. Young people are very strange, whatever. But like you were, that was clearly what you've just done is accusationary. You've gone, I caught you staring. Are you gay? You're never going to be able to interpret that in any other way other than like, why are you looking at me? You're gay. Like there's no other way to interpret that. There's no other way to interpret that. I feel like you might be the gay one because you're very... Suddenly, any man looking at you means that they're gay. Like, I feel like you're hiding your own feelings. <laughs> Sorry. He said, leave me alone. I'm gay. <laughs> because the way that you talked about it, the way that you did that, made it feel like you were insecure about yourself rather than the other person. Am I the a-hole for telling my daughter that life doesn't stop for others because hers isn't going well? Oh! I have three kids and my daughter is 27. Hasn't had the best luck in her romantic life. She got cheated on many times and her previous relationships were unhealthy. I also believe she is uh, she is in a toxic relationship with her current boyfriend. My nieces and nephews, along with my other kids, are all happily married and some start and some are starting their own families. It was my sister's birthday recently and she and her husband had planned a trip for the family. She helped with expenses if needed, but for most of, for most part, everyone paid for themselves. My daughter was the only one going by herself. We did things as a family, but there were times where we split up to do some things with just our partners. So sometimes my daughter was by herself or basically being a third wheel. Oh, it's awkward. That's an awkward situation to be in. <laughs> At the end of the trip, my daughter complained to me how she hated going on the trip, that she felt like it was a cruel joke that she was there by herself and that uh, the others should not have shown affection to their partners when she was around. Okay, that's a bit much, sis. This is not the first time she was complaining about something like this. She does it, she she has done it after holidays and birthdays as well. I'll admit, I'm tired of my daughter complaining about this. So I told her that just because her life isn't going well doesn't mean others will stop living theirs. She hasn't talked to me since and that, oh, that was almost two weeks ago. My husband is on my side, but worried I'll lose my daughter. Am I the a-hole? Hmm. Edit, she was allowed to bring a friend. My daughter isn't single, she has a boyfriend. I actually understand where the mother is coming from. I do understand it, but I don't think she went around it the right way. Clearly her daughter is struggling and hurting with things and clearly she's not in the best mindset. I actually agree with you to a certain degree, but I think it was just a little bit too harsh. I think you could have been a little bit more tactful with how you handled the situation. I find it interesting that she was allowed to bring a friend or her boyfriend that she has at the moment. She was still allowed to bring these people and she chose not to, but then got upset because other people in the family were then showing affection or doing things as a couple. Like if I was going on holiday and everyone was a couple and I was allowed to bring a friend, like obviously now I'm an adult, it's different, but like I would bring someone with me. So in situations like this, I could still do something with someone. I think I find it interesting that you chose not to, but then complained about being on your own. Sometimes I get annoyed around Valentine's Day because the amount of people I see that complain about, oh, I, what about single people? It's unfair. I hate seeing all these happy couples. It makes me so angry. Does anyone give a shit? Shut up. Not everything is about you. I am someone who does not have parents. I'm on my own. I do not have parents. I do not have a family. I have. I don't have parents. I don't have grandparents. I don't have extended family. Like, I don't have any of this. So every time Mother's Day and Father's Day comes around, obviously, I don't have anyone that I can be like, celebrate. I don't have a nest egg that I can fall back on. I don't have any of this stuff. But I never complain when Father's Day comes around. I never complain when Mother's Day comes around. Some people have a wonderful relationship with their family and I would never in my life ever try to downplay or degrade or be like, I can't believe you're thinking about Mother's Day. What about all of us people without mothers? I hate you. And when I see people acting like this, I get the same vibe and it's like, I'm sorry that you're not in a great relationship or you don't, haven't had relationships or whatever, but to expect other people to not show affection to their other halves 
because you don't have someone that you're happy with is unhinged and totally unacceptable. I actually think in this situation, everyone's being a bit of a twat. I, I do agree with the mother to a certain degree, but I think how she went around this was too harsh. You could have been a bit more tactful. I do feel like the daughter needs a little bit of a wake up call to be like, your control of your own life. Like, I don't know. Am I the a-hole for hating where my wife is going to get a tattoo? Oh! My wife, 28 female, and I'm a 34 male, have been married for three years. I love her to death and she is the best thing in my life. However, she wants to get a tattoo. She already has four, one on the hip, bicep, shoulder, and side boob. Oh! Side boob, girls! And I have no problem with them. I have two myself. This proposed tattoo though is causing problems. So she wants to get a fairly large floral design with a hummingbird on her chest. It would be from just under the collarbone down between her boobs. So I guess like most of the chest section. It will be visible in nearly every shirt she'd wear. I'm begging her to reconsider where it goes. I don't like the location of where she wants to get it. This has caused a few arguments with her calling me an a-hole and mostly cites it's her, it's, it is her body and I shouldn't be controlling her. I don't have an issue with the tattoo itself. I have an issue with where she wants it. So, Am I the a-hole? And it says, edit, I find chest tattoos unattractive. I like the design. I don't like the size or location. So, right. Hmm. First of all, you don't have a right to tell anyone else what to do with their body. Like, obviously there are limits. Like, if you're saying, I want to cut off my arm because I don't want an arm, then obviously maybe get therapy but like if it, like these are tattoos and things so like if someone wants to get a tattoo of a hummingbird with flowers on the chest you don't have a right to tell this person not to however what i will say attraction is not really something that you can help what you're attracted to is kind of what you're attracted to i'm not really into guys that have like excessive facial hair like if you've got a beard coming down here I don't really find that attractive. I don't mind some facial hair, but if you've got like a really, really long beard, I'm not really attracted to that. So if I was with a partner and suddenly they decided they wanted to grow their beard really long, I probably would be like, I I, I don't like it. Like you, you can't help what you like. The same way that I don't like face tattoos. If I was with someone and suddenly they decided they want to get loads of face tattoos, I would find that unattractive and maybe my attraction to them would change. Everyone has their own things that they're attracted to and what they don't like. I think if someone is making choices and it's starting to affect how you feel about them, that is something that you need to work on or you're going to have to make other plans. There, th th that is reality. Like feelings for people can change if you're not sexually attracted to them anymore. And although sex isn't always a big thing or, you know, attraction, like sexual attraction to someone isn't a big thing for everyone. It is a massive part of most people's relationships. Attraction, slightly what you're attracted to, can adapt slowly over time. But like some things don't really change. I'm never going to find someone with loads of face tattoos attractive. Like it's not something that I, the same way that I don't, find women attractive like it's just part of my brain chemistry i can't ever see myself suddenly being attracted to someone who's got loads of face tattoos like especially because now i'm in my adulthood like these things might change a bit when you're young because you're attracted and what you like your brain changes a lot when you know when you're a teenager to when you're an adult but like now that i'm an adult i can't see that ever changing so i don't know it's a tricky one especially when it comes to relationships and love but what i will say is you can't tell her what to do if what they're doing is changing your opinion of them or your attraction to them then that will need work because it's just going to cause a rift you don't have the right to control what she does to her body there's limits obviously like if you're going to start like cutting off limbs then again maybe be like oh this probably isn't a good idea but the thing is as well because the tattoo that she's getting is like a floral design with a hummingbird like that sounds wonderful like that sounds beautiful it's just not like even the, like again i might understand if she was suddenly getting like really hateful symbols or like pornography tattooed in her then maybe it might be a bit different but like it's a hummingbird on her chest with flowers like that sounds beautiful so the, the tattoo that she's not even getting isn't even an issue so yeah People get very, people get very upset and very, I guess, defensive when it comes to attraction and what people like. People take it far too personal, like a personal attack, but like not every single person in the world is going to be attracted to you. And if you can't accept that, then you need therapy. <laughs> not everyone is going to find my tattoos, my piercings, my bald head, my contact lens. Like a lot of people aren't going to find a lot of the stuff that I do to myself attractive. And I, that's fine. Like, I'm, I'm fully okay with that. So this one says, am I the a-hole for not telling my family I'm gay? Mm, 
Well, here we go, girls. Before I read anything, I want to make something very clear, though. If you're not ready to come out and you don't want to tell someone, that's absolutely fine. Never feel like you need to come out because other people are pressuring you. Like, I don't know what the story is, and we're going to get to it. But please just know that if you are gay, if you're off the homosexual, uh, encountering people, sex. Don't have sex. If you're gay, you don't have to come out. I'm 16 and I've known I'm gay since I was 12. I haven't told anyone because I don't really want to and I'm kind of scared about their reactions. You're 16, it's fine. Last week I got home and my parents started screaming at me saying I was selfish and disgusting and I should have told them ages ago instead of making them think I'm straight. What? What? You're disgusting. Oh, oh, I wonder why I didn't tell you because you just called me disgusting. They found out because my uncle saw me kissing a guy in the alleyway. Oh, oh dirty old slapper in the alleyway. And he told my family because that's complete. That's a completely normal thing to do apparently. And now half of them won't talk to me and the other half are blowing up my phone, basically telling me I'm a huge a-hole. What kind of family is this? My dad said I really upset my mum because she expected me to get married and have kids and I got her and I got her and everyone else's hopes up. What the, what the hell is this family? Am I the a-hole? My whole family hates me at the moment and I really don't know what I've done. Uh, I've said sorry and to all of them but they're still super angry. First of all, I want to make something very, very clear. Clearly, clearly, this family doesn't like you being gay and is homophobic and is using this weird excuse of, you let me believe that you were going to have children. Uh, like, you're a 16 year old. If you're saying that's your 16 year old, I'm sorry, that's absolutely unhinged. You clearly have a problem with someone being gay and you're just using that weird excuse as like a smoke screen or like to kind of mask how you really feel. That is such a weird thing to say that you should have told me sooner so I wasn't getting my hopes up about having grandchildren. You are not entitled to grandchildren just because you've had a child. No one else's body or like <clears throat> sexuality or children, childbearing, like that has you have no authority over any like if someone wants to have a child that's up to them obviously if they're very young you should be like maybe you shouldn't have children too young but if they don't want children you should never say well you have to have children because i need grandchildren filthy nasty things glad i never was one Deranged, deranged. I can already say, you're not the arsehole. Please do not think you're the arsehole. This was only posted a couple of days ago. So if you do happen to watch this, like you probably won't, but you're not the arsehole in this situation. Why are you thinking of a 16 year old having children? This is still a child themselves. You're you're thinking of a child having children. What the f uh. Sorry, that's really riled me up. I can't believe the reaction that you could, I can't believe that's a reaction that the family had. Like what, disgusting. The idea that you would call your child selfish and disgusting all also because they didn't tell you that they were gay. And what you're actually saying is you're selfish and disgusting because you're gay, but they're just trying to flip it in a different way around, just try and like hide the true feeling. These people are clearly homophobic. I really hope that you manage to become self-supporting and self-sufficient relatively quickly. As soon as you're 18, you're able to support yourself. I know it's not very easy in this day and age, but I really hope you manage to find a way to leave these people because uh, the things might get better. But if this is the kind of reaction, this is what they say to you when you're 16 years old, then these are awful people. I'm so sick of these stories of like parents putting pressure on their like kids to have more children. Like it's, n you are not entitled to grandchildren just because you have children. In 2023, raising a child and raising a family is so much more expensive. The cost of living crisis is going insane. House prices are soaring. Like the idea, like most people can't afford to like survive themselves like most people alive at the moment cannot su like even survive themselves let alone the idea of being like oh but you must have more children no what are you talking about i find it totally unhinged the level of res like the reaction people have when you tell them that you want to be child free or that you don't want children i have never seen a more unhinged reaction from random strangers when you tell them you don't want children the 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 level 
the level of like entitlement over your life people suddenly have. And honestly, I feel like the only, only, only reason people actually react really horrifically when you say that you don't want children, especially if you're a woman who says it, the only reason people react so badly is because they're trying to convince themselves that their own choice to have children was the right idea. Because if that wasn't the case, there is no reason for you to get upset because Aggie down the road has decided that she doesn't want children. Oh gosh, what a weird full circle moment. Right at the end and it says, am I the a-hole for getting a piercing behind my parents' back? No, naughty Betty. Um, I'll happily hear everyone's response to if I'm the a-hole, but specifically I'm looking for opinions on people over the age of 40 and for the parents of Reddit. I'm not 40, but you know, I'm in the piercing world, so I can... I, I can talk. I'm 17 and have been talking about getting a nose piercing for the last two years. My parents are very old school and have made it very clear that they do not like dyed hair, piercings, tattoos, body modifications, etc. My grandparents were the same. <laughs> I've always been planning on getting a nose piercing and today was the day that I followed through with it. I asked a few people where the best piercing place in my area was and they all recommended the same place. I went down to the piercing place, provided them with the documentation they needed and paid for the piercing with my own money. I came home and showed my sister who's 19 and she said it looked great and left it at that. I sent some photos to my friends and they said it all looked good too. When my parents got home, I was talking to them for almost half an hour before they even noticed I had a piercing. When they finally did see the piercing, they were both furious at me and were calling me some pretty nasty names that I won't say on here. My parents both ate their dinners without me tonight and my mum went to bed without saying anything to me. Meanwhile, I am now in the same room as my dad and my sister and my dad has calmed down a fair bit he said for that for the last hundred years there has been a negative stigma to people with piercings and tattoos and that stigma is still there or maybe you could change your ideas though the only reason the stigma is still there is because people like you are stubborn and refuse to change your perception that's the reason the opinions are still there because you have decided that you still want to criticize them i feel like a lot of this kind of stuff is always that's the thing is i always feel like this this kind of attitude is it bleeds into everything it's like oh but you know places like this won't accept you places like this won't accept you but it's like but you're not changing you're part of the problem so anyway the stigma is still there and that my piercings will only do more harm than good i mean it's just a no stud she's just got a no stud she's not got like the most, like, loads of, like, it's just a nose piercing. He proceeded to say that he had co-workers who didn't get jobs they really wanted because of facial piercings they had, and that, it, uh, and that the same thing could happen to me. My reply was, this might have been the case many years ago, but as time goes on, people seem to care less about things like piercings and tattoos, and it's just much more widely accepted in society to have them. And I really doubted that I won't get a job because of a piercing that I can take out anyway. As I said at the very beginning, I would say, if if your parents or your grandparents or whatever around you who you live with are very adamant that they really dislike piercings and tattoos, again, you don't want to risk what happened to the person at the, at the first where, they got, where they're getting kicked out of the house because of it. Because what you have to remember as well is if your parents are saying to you, we do not want you to do this, and then you do it behind their back, they're not angry as well just because you've got a piercing. They're angry because you have gone against their wishes. It's, it's, it, it kind of opens up more. They're now going to lose trust in you because they can't trust you to listen to what they say. And like, you are 17, you're still like a minor and you still have to do what your parents say, unfortunately. If you're still living under their roof, you still went behind their back. So although I don't agree with their reaction to a nose piercing, like it's really not a big deal, you still went behind their back. So I'm not surprised that they're angry with you. I do think the anger is misplaced because like, it's just a nose piercing. Like I would understand if you suddenly pierced all of your face up. Then, Because even I'd be like, this probably isn't a good idea to do at 17. Like let's not scar your face up. But it's just a single nose stud. Like let's not act like it's the end of the world. But I don't think you're an asshole. I do think that maybe you could have thought about what you were doing a little bit more. Like, I hope you're not shocked that they reacted badly because you knew full well that they were going to react badly. If I found out that you went to like a kiosk as well, like say I was a parent and you were like, I came back and I went to like Claire's accessories. I'd be quite angry with you for going to Claire's. Oh, burpy burpy. I would be angry at you for going to Claire's accessories. I think this has all been an overreaction, but as I always say, if you are under your parents' roof and they're, they're supporting you financially, just 
wait until you're self-supporting before you do things that you know are gonna ang like piss them off or get angry. It's the same I say about coming out. If your parents are like really hardcore religious and you're really scared about telling them because you have no idea how they're gonna react, it's probably best to not come out to them until you're self-supporting and you can take care of yourself. So if they do happen on the small chance, to cut you off, to disown you, because it still happens. You have to be realistic. It still happens. Like, it's not gonna be a good idea. Like, just tell your friends. You can have a supportive group, but just wait until you're self supporting before telling your parents, because is coming out worth potentially being homeless? And it, I really hate saying that because I'm like, I hate that you have to hide yourself, but I want you to be safe. My biggest goal in life is to make sure that I give people advice that keeps them safe. Am I the a-hole for not giving up my seat and embarrassing the woman who demanded my seat? Oh God, are we about to see a lot of ableism? Jesus Christ. A few years ago, I, 16 female, lost my leg in an accident. I've been using a prosthetic leg since then and because because my family is well off, it's pretty. It's a pretty advanced one at the point to where it looks like I have two normal legs. Whenever I wear long trousers, which I usually do because I'm really self-conscious about showing my prosthetic. These days, I can pretty much do anything without issues, walking, running, going upstairs, etc. The main issue I have is keeping my balance when there is sudden change in movement in places like trains and buses, which is where the topic of this post comes in. I was riding the train and sat down in a seat reserved for disabled, elderly, and pregnant women. It was pretty busy, so there was no other seats available. And few stops later, a woman came up to me telling me I needed to move because she needed that seat and I shouldn't be sitting there. I told her I was sorry, but I needed the seat for myself. She got all argumentative and said that I just need to get up because the seat is meant for the elderly and I'm just a lazy child who is more than capable of standing. God's sake, what's wrong with people? I again apologized and said I really needed the seat myself. She left and got the train conductor who also told me to get up from the seat. I was really done with being treated this way. Now, I rolled up my trouser leg to show my prosthetic and told her I wasn't going to move. She suddenly got very red faced and mumbled something before she got off at the next station. So she only needed one stop, one station left. Am I the a-hole? I could have said I had a prosthetic right away, but it was a really touchy subject for me and it makes me feel very self-conscious. First of all, you are not the a-hole in any way, shape or form. I don't know how many more times that we need to exp like express this to people that not all disabilities are completely visible. Some people have many things that no one would know by just looking at them. Like ableism is real and a lot of people do still have this notion that if I can't see right away that you're visibly disabled, then you are not disabled. I'd love to have known what the train director said. Like there's no information here about what the train director said. Like I do understand that there are sometimes like people would get on the train and it looks like a young person or someone who like seems able-bodied like would be sitting in a seat. And I get that sometimes it could be like, oh, why is this person getting up the seat? But the idea that you would then go up to the person and be like, you have to move. And they've said to you, I need the seat. It's not like they've gone, I'm not moving. Like they, the, 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 the girl actually says to you, I need this seat. If that still doesn't trigger something in your brain that goes, oh, maybe there's something there that I don't know. To me, it's deranged. Like, I, I, that's really shitty. Why don't you mind your own business? I always try my hardest. I normally stand up anyway, but like, I always try my hardest never to sit in those seats that are reserved for people who might be less abled. Even if the train's basically empty, I will still sit in like, seats that don't that, that are furthest away kind of from them because sometimes there has been times where i've been sitting in a seat like this and other people may have sat in chairs that are reserved for these people and an elderly person has come on and then you ask them like would you like the seat because it's happened many times to me before i've been like would you like to sit here and they've gone no 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 it's fine and then you sit there but then everyone around you as new people come on the train are like why is he sitting there and making the old woman stand up and i just hate the idea that someone might think i'm being an asshole you would hate it if someone was doing that to you so i find it interesting that you do it to a lot of people and this older person has been like no i need the seat more than you to the stage where they've gone to get the train driver to come down and then you've gone i like i i don't know i i, I it, it's to me this is really shocking but it also doesn't surprise me like people are shit main character syndrome main character syndrome you are not the asshole and you should never feel like you have to 
justify your disability to someone because they like they're being a twat but I, I guess in every single type of community it happens within the gay community there are gay people who are incredibly homophobic against more femme presenting gay people there are trans people who are very very transphobic towards people who may not necessarily pass amazingly in the in any community there's always going to be people in there who have a stick up their ass because they're like well i deserve it more than you or i'm better than you or i'm the good one, um, pick me. Essentially, it's the pick me syndrome. Well, guys, I'm well and truly aboard that trigger train. Choo choo, speeding down the railway, about to crash off a cliff and plunge to my death. Bye! And I'm back just like Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus was an asshole. Oh, Jesus loved a good asshole. Oh, Jesus loved a good peach. Oh, squat for Jesus. Oh, Jesus loved to get raw dogs at the last supper table. Oh, Jesus loved to go dogging at Hampstead Heath. Oh, Jesus loved. I'm not going to finish what I was going to say then because it was actually going to get me demonetized. This has been interesting. If you've really enjoyed me doing one of these Am I the A-hole ones by myself, I know that it does sometimes go into the podcast. But of course, me and Luxaria like to talk about lots of different things. Uh, so we only ever do one of these like once every like four or five months. But I'd love to make this more of a reoccurring thing because I this is one of the biggest like Reddits out. There's 11 million followers to this Reddit and I would love to do this more often. I do these as well live over on Twitch, like I said. So make sure you do come follow me over on Twitch. It's Roly West over. So I'm really salivary. It's Roly West over on Twitch. Uh, yeah, come, come follow me over on Twitch as well. Maybe we can get in some there as well. But uh, anyway... I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know any of the stories I have spoke about down below. Let me know what you think. Give me your opinions. Am I right? Am I wrong? You do not have to agree with me. That's absolutely fine. This is a welcoming community where you can easily disagree. It, please don't feel like you can't disagree with me. But yes, thank you for watching today. Please hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos that are coming up. Today's Twitch shout out goes to Moons M. Thank you for following me over on Twitch. Like I said, come follow me on Twitch. Maybe you could be in the next Twitch shout out. A massive shout out to my lovely Patreons whose names you can see on the side of the screen here. Thank you for being a Patreon. And an extra special shout out to my top tier Patreons. Prince of Horror, Cameron Pittman, Callum S, Rishi, Athena Barrington, Erin Grace, Heather McFarland, Christina Kyle, Benjamin Baker, Aya, Robin Scott Palmer, Corin Pemberton, Bethard, Steph Utech, Caitlin Wright, Chloe Louise, Shell Herman and Kelly Bowser. Thank you for being my top tier patrons. You guys are mwah, delicious. Anyway, be fabulous, be amazing, be gay, be everything you want to be. And don't let any bitch other tell you that you can't be you. Why is that? Because you are flawless.